something that I would like you to explore is how does Christianity view other religions? Because I don't, because <coughs> when I'm thinking um, about Christianity and trying to embody Christianity, I'm not at the level where I can, where I can accept it and act it fully uh, without processing it. And I don't want, and, and it seems to me that there's things that are incredibly valued, but there's, there's things to me that don't make as much sense. And, and I can't truthfully act them out when I don't uh, see that they make sense. And so there's, there's, a, there's a tiny uh, gap in, in the system that I can't um, incorporate. And something that, I've, that has helped me a lot to try to uh, have more trust in things that don't make sense uh, is when I notice the same pattern across very different cultures. And so that's what a lot of people try to do uh, with perennialism, for example. And, and th I think that, hel that helped me a lot and I think that helps a lot of people. But at the same time, I don't want to get into the, like the Huxley mode of just like crunching everything together. They're, they're all a single theology and whatever. And I also don't want to have like the modern liberal tendency of just like equalizing everything so that I don't have a hierarchy. But so there's, there's these two tensions and, and I'm trying to balance the two. And I'm curious about how, how Christianity uh, deals with this. Like, like what, is, what is Buddhism to Christianity? Like what is Hinduism and so forth? Yeah. Um, it did. I mean, the thing, it depends. It, Christianity doesn't have one answer to that. It just depends on who you read and, and also what purpose the person writing is writing for, right? Who are they talking to and what are they saying? Um, let's say it this way. The, the desire to know what Christians think of other religions, for example, or the desire to be, make that okay. Because it's a, it's a pressure right now. It's a pressure, a social pressure, that you say that every other religion is okay. Right? Um, and it's an intellectual pressure. It's almost like if you don't do that, then you are, you're a pariah, like you're, you're a zealot or whatever. Okay. Um, now that is, that's something. That is, a, that is an actual social manifestation of something. And, it, and it's a social manifestation of, of a breakdown of, of, of identities and a breakdown of, of particular paths. Because the thing is, is that when you walk on a path, the person who comes to you and asks you if the other paths are, would, would lead to the same place, what is that person doing? What are you doing? I'm walking on a path. And then you come to me and you ask, well, what about this other path on the other side of the hill? Don't you think that that path would also reach to the top of the mountain? Why do you feel like you have to walk on this path? Is it, aren't all paths the same? And it's like, that person is your enemy. Like that person is, is not going to go anywhere, seriously. Because they're not on a path. You need to be on a path. And you can't make it up as you go along. And, and, and so there's a danger in asking that question in the sense that there's a day, if that, if the question you ask me is done in a kind of political desire to, to be okay with, with the liberal order, let's say, like to be okay with society. So like, at least I'll be, I'll be accepted by my friends if I at least say <laughs> that I think that other religions are okay. So I can be a Christian, but not I think all religions are okay. That way I won't run into trouble. Like I'll be okay with my friends. Like that's not, that's not, that's not the best way to go. Like this is the way that I see, I see it. I believe that everything that exists is in its proper place and in its proper uh, light, it is a manifestation of the divine logos and it has to be or else it wouldn't exist. There's nothing which exists, which is, which is evil in itself. Okay. Everything that exists has to be a manifestation of the great pattern. There's no way around it. Okay. And so in that light, 
I think that I can look at other traditions and I can learn some things from them, but I always do it from the inside of where I am. And so I am a Christian and I hear a passage from Rumi and I think, Hey, that's not bad, but I'm the Christian. I'm not standing in the nowhere zone of, of like weird uh, universalism. Right. Cause universalism universalists stand, think they stand above all the paths and they can look at each one and say what they think of each of these paths. And they can go, well, I like this about Buddhism and I like this about Christianity and I like this about Hinduism. And they make themselves the gods in the world. Um, but in the end, they're not going anywhere. That, that's something that I've, that I've discovered lately that um, the, there's, a, there's a really good uh, appeal and it's enticing to kind of pick and choose and to like have a, a very broad overview. And, and, and I think there's some true value in that, but, but there's also some flaws and some that you pointed out and also something that, uh, that I became more aware as I, as I gained more experience is that these things are so complicated that it's hard to even grasp one to make coherence. So like, you, like it, 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 it's a lifetime of, of trying to understand these things in fully. So if you're trying to understand all of them and you're trying to put that into a coherent new path, like you're not even walking anywhere because it's it, not, not only because they have to cohere together, but also because your own understanding also comes from the very act of walking. And so if you're too worried about which one to walk, like you're never, you're never progressing. Yeah. And it's, and it's more than that. It's actually more than that because one of the things that happens in Christianity, or if you, if you follow, let's say you do, you engage in Christianity, you take the sacraments, you find a confessor, you, you do all the, you do all that. Like you're right in there and you're living the life. There are things that are going to be asked of you and things that you're going to encounter that you're not going to like, that you're just not going to like, and you're not going to understand and will actually maybe frustrate you a little bit, but you know what? That's actually pretty good for you. Because what happens if you, if you stand above all religions and then you create your hodgepodge of, of all the different religions, you end up just taking whatever it is that you like in those religions. And then you actually, then what, what happens is that you have no, nothing will make you grow. Like, how can you grow if you, you have, if there's nothing to challenge you to something that you're not, mm -hmm. you know? And you see it, like you, you, you can see it. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a church in uh, California um, where they made, there's a universalist church where they put up all these saints uh, painted up in the apps, like a uh, frieze of saints kind of dancing together. And in that frieze of saints, they put everybody. It's like, there's Gandhi and, uh, and there's like Ella Fitzgerald and there's, you know, there's some saints, there's like, you know, Augustine is there and origin is there. And, um, but it's funny that, and so they're like, we're universalists. We like everything and everything's good. And it's just funny because it's funny that all the people up in your saints freeze are still all the people you agree with. Right. That, that's right. The, so why, why, if you're a universalist and you think that everybody's going to be saved, then why is Hitler not up in your freeze? Mm -hmm. like, why don't you put a little of some people that'll challenge, maybe not Hitler, but like put someone you don't like, at least like someone you don't like who's not as bad, but you, you need to, you need. So, so that's the problem with like this kind of standing above and, and you can right. see it like new age religion is all that. Like new yeah, age religion is all example. that. It's just like porridge. It's horrible. But it's it's funny because the the example you gave is actually <laughs> a perfect parallel to my uh, philosophy journey because I, I started uh, learning on my own, uh, but then I started to have like an intimation, like okay, we're living in the age of internet, you can learn a lot of stuff on your own, etc. But I I just had the intimation that just picking and choosing what I wanted wasn't the best choice, and I decided to go to university and study philosophy more formally exactly because of that. Like I don't want to have my own biased selection of what I like. Mm. So that, that, that's also, it, it's a perfect parallel with, with a more religious element as well, because you just, you have your own biases. Like you're just going to have your own little selection of, and you just ignore everything you disagree with. And that's, that's not a good way to, to move forward. Yeah.